Well, Australia will follow several other Western nations and introduce a tough new sanctions regime to make it easier for the federal government to seize the assets of human rights abusers and those guilty of serious crimes. Backbenchers from across the parliament have been pressing the federal government to introduce its own version of the US Magnitsky Act, which the American government developed to target human rights abusers, kleptocrats and corrupt actors with economic sanctions and travel bans. Like yesterday, Foreign Minister Maurice Payne announced that Australia will legislate for such laws by the end of the year, in line with recommendations from Parliament's bipartisan Joint Committee on Intelligence and Security. James Patterson is a Liberal Senator and Chair of that committee, known more commonly as the PJCIS. I'm absolutely delighted that the government has positively responded to the unanimous bipartisan report that they received, which recommended a Magnitsky-style sanctions regime for Australia. It's important because Australia's existing autonomous sanctions regime is frankly a bit clunky and a bit out of date. And the government has agreed that it needs to be updated and brought to a modern standard. And what we'll do is seek to emulate what our allies and friends around the world have done, such as the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada and the European Union. And we will allow ourselves, we'll equip ourselves to directly, personally target and sanction foreign officials who are engaged in human rights abuses, corrupt activity, or threats to Australia's national security, including uh, undertaking cyber attacks under Australia. In that, Including that last element of uh, Magnitsky sanctions will actually make our scheme the broadest and the most far-reaching in the world, and will make it have a really important national security as well as human rights focus. When you say the current schemes are clunky... Can you give some examples? Yes. So what the current schemes require is before you sanction any individual official or entity at a subnational level, uh, you have to first designate that country and you have to go through a months long process to designate the country as a uh, relevant uh, area for the purpose of sanctions. Now, that's a slow process, and it's also a process which requires, frankly, a fairly undiplomatic statement about uh, what we believe about other countries. It's much easier in under a Magnitsky-style regime where we can just go ahead and directly sanction those individuals who the foreign minister believes meets the test of having engaged in sufficiently serious corrupt conduct, human rights conduct, or threats to Australia's national security. Right. So the fear was previously that you could be tiring an entire country with the same brush. This presumably would be more specific. I mean, what kind of sanctions are we talking about in practical terms that we could be implementing? That, that's right. This is much more precise. And it, what it involves is a personal cost for the official in a foreign country which is carrying out the human rights abuse or, or other uh, crimes. And what it could mean is that their assets held in Australia are frozen, that they cannot bank and store their wealth in Australia. It might be that they are denied visas to travel to Australia and that of their immediate family members and associates. And particularly when it's done in conjunction with allies like the US and the UK and the EU and Canada, what that means is they're becoming comes for those officials nowhere safe in the world for them to house any of the ill-gotten gains that they might be accruing from their corrupt activity or their human rights abuses. It means that they can't rely on the protection of their own government when there is a real cost for them and their families elsewhere in the world. And we hope it will be a deterrent effect from them carrying out this activity. Mm. I appreciate we don't want to foreshadow where or how these could be used in Australia, but how have they been used in other countries? Use, you use the US as an example. So the United States uh, was the first country to legislate the Magnitsky regime. It initially targeted uh, corrupt officials and human rights abusers in Russia. It was then expanded and amended to become a global act to allow them to target people all around the world, uh, from across uh, the Middle East to Asia to Africa, uh, all around the world people have been sanctioned for their conduct. Um, it is it is conduct which raises grave concerns of systemic human rights abuses. Uh, the United States and its allies uh, earlier this year sanctioned officials involved in human rights abuses in Xinjiang. And Australia and New Zealand, because we didn't have a Magnitsky-style regime at that time, issued a public statement of support for those coordinated sanctions, but we weren't at that time able to participate in it. Would that be something that you would like to look at doing? I don't want to preempt uh, the legislation because it's not yet been fully drafted, let alone introduced mm. and implemented. Uh, but when it comes to it, of course, the key once you have the legislation is making sure you use it in an effective way. It's crucial, though, it will always be a decision for executive government because executive government has to weigh up, on the one hand, the serious human rights abuses that might be taking place, and on the other, Australia's national interest. And they're best placed to make that careful judgment about whether it's in our national interest to take that action. 
Taking for an example something like Myanmar, could that be used there to sanction generals in Myanmar? Uh, Australia has actually previously sanctioned Myanmar under our old autonomous sanctions regime. Myanmar is a designated entity for the purpose of sanctions, and we have previously sanctioned Myanmar. Uh, it, it, in response to this current crisis, Australia has not yet dis- made a decision to sanction the generals. We could do that under our existing uh policies if we choose, and we could also do it under these new beefed up sanctions if we choose, but that will come down to a national interest consideration from executive government. What is the example of a situation that we previously couldn't do that we can now do once this is legislated? Uh, a very understandable question, but a difficult one for me to answer without preempting the legislation and decisions that will ultimately made, be made by the foreign minister in consultation with the attorney general. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't want to preempt that. So, what is the process now? You have given your review to the minister. The minister said that they will legislate this before the end of the year. What now? Uh, that's it. So the drafting is undertaking right now. The Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade is drafting the legislation to make sure uh, that it'll be ready to be introduced before the end of the year. My hope is that it'll be passed before the end of the year because it is an issue which attracts support from across the parliament, uh, from Labor to Greens to Crossbench. There's really strong support for Australia to do this. So I hope it's a very straightforward and very quick legislative process so we can get these laws on the books and then start to use them uh, in, a, in an appropriate and balanced way. That's James Patterson, Liberal Senator and chair of the PJCIS, the Joint Committee in Parliament on Intelligence and Security, discussing new Magnitsky laws to be legislated by the end of the year in the Australian Parliament.